Hello, and welcome back to OpenShift's Data Services Office Hours. I'm your host, Frank Lavinia, the global go-to-market lead for data services here at Red Hat. Now, today, I wanted to kind of, you know, continue to kick off the fresh start, the new year, with the general overview of Red Hat OpenShift Data Science, or you'll hear me refer to it as Rhodes, and how it provides a collaborative environment with powerful open source tools that let it's both scalable and flexible and has integration with other tools. So put your seatbelts on, because where we're going, we will need roads. Sorry, I couldn't resist the pun. All right, so first let's uh, let's take a look at the kind of the uh, overview slide deck here uh, for roads. It's important to get a background of what generally I mean when I talk about roads and how it fits into a much larger uh, story we have here at Red Hat. Uh, so, you know, really, Red Hat helps customers build, run, and manage uh, applications everywhere, right? We are the open hybrid cloud, right? And this runs from anything from traditional end tier applications, cloud native microservices, ISV apps and cloud services, as well as data analytics and AIML. And all of this is based on top of Kubernetes, but not just Kubernetes, a fully managed a white glove experience that is OpenShift. And OpenShift could run on any type of hardware that can support Linux. And I, I say any type of hardware because I don't want people to, to pull out their old uh, Tamagotchi uh, <laughs> uh, virtual pets from the 90s, although I'm sure somebody somewhere has made it work there. But ultimately, it really doesn't matter where you have hardware, right? You can have physical, you can have virtual, it can be private cloud, public cloud, or as we're seeing more and more increasingly at the edge. And this is a self and fully managed application environment. So when we talk about self-managed, we basically mean you run it on-prem and you manage um, a lot of the work for you, although we do also have a fully managed option. So it's, it's like getting a private driver. Right, that 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 top of the line experience, right? Not just the luxury car um, in your favorite rideshare app, but uh, you know it being driven. It comes to you. It takes you where you want to go, and you don't have to worry about any other details, uh, such as the oil changes, gasoline, that sort of thing. So Red Hat OpenShift exists here, and it's not just another data science platform. It's not just another way to run Jupyter notebooks and do data science experiments. It runs on top of an existing, well-known and trusted enterprise-proven platform uh, that is OpenShift, right? So it runs on top of, again, the solid foundation. And not only that, this solid foundation provides you with a number of deployment options, right? Uh, from physical machines uh, uh, to virtual machines on-prem to any of the major hyperscalers, AWS, Mic Microsoft Azure, IBM Cloud and Google Cloud. So you have this ability to run just about anywhere. Now, OpenShift Data Science or Rhodes is based on the Open Data Hub project and Operate First. So oh, what is Open Data Hub? Open Data Hub is, a, is the community-driven upstream open source project demonstrating how to build and architect uh, an AI a machine learning platform that uh, is runs on OpenShift, right? How it runs on a containerized based platform and is comprised of open source projects. Uh, Operate First is a subset of uh, Open Data Hub, uh, operated at scale for community and university uh, type use cases uh, to add operational excellence. Uh, Red Hat OpenShift Data Science Cloud Service is a subset of Operate First, uh, and it is it, it is exists as a cloud service on uh, Red Hat OpenShift managed. Uh, so think of uh, Rosa or Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS uh, with optional uh, offerings with with ISVs, and we'll talk about our partner uh, ISVs in a minute. And finally, and this has really been a game changer for um, for a lot of our customers, is Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, data science self-managed. And basically, this is a fast-moving software uh, stream that mirrors the release frequency and capabilities of our cloud service, but 
delivered in a self-managed offering for your on-premise needs. Now, this is important, particularly for data science, um, and in that when you train your models, you have to train your models in a way that respects uh, user privacy, data sovereignty laws, and any other regulations that come with it. So what we're seeing with a lot of customers, and I'll switch to the whiteboard here, um, is um, well, there's a little bit of a glitch there. Uh, but we'll work around it. Uh, what we're seeing with a lot of customers is that they have data. They have tons and tons of data. And a lot of this data may contain PII. And there's been a real hesitancy for reasons large and small, uh, regulatory and non-regulatory, is that they hesitate to put this in a cloud. And there's my terrible handwriting for you. Um, so what we offer at uh, Red Hat OpenShift Data Science is that you could run, now you can run roads. I wanna, I wanna have a red pen for, for roads, because of course. Uh, you can run roads in the cloud. Uh, and you can now run roads on-prem, right? So now you, as a data scientist or data engineer or a uh, business decision maker or a technical decision maker, now have the option of doing your training um, on-prem, right? And then deploy to the cloud or deploy on-prem or at the edge. So what this really does is this opens up a new uh, or so many more possibilities for organizations that, again, for regulatory reasons around data sovereignty, data privacy, uh, could not use a service, a native cloud service from a hyperscaler, right? Uh, you know, uh, the, the native cloud services on hyperscalers are fine, but you have to, one, run in their cloud, and two, once you get their data into that particular cloud, well, you're committed, right? Uh, and what, what this allows you to do, if you build on top of OpenShift, I'll go back to this slide here, right? You have all of these clouds at your disposal, right? So whether it's actual physical hardware, virtual hardware, or any of the hyperscalers, your code will be portable. Now, obviously data has gravity and there's some, uh, some things that need to be worked around that. But the core of it is you're not locked in to any one particular vendor. You have ultimate flexibility. Um, and again, you know, um, kind of stole the thunder from this slide here, but it's a hybrid cloud platform and it lets you access Red Hat portfolio and other services. Plus we have a rich partner ecosystem. Um, and you have this ability to do this in a hybrid way, whether it's, um, you want to train some very sensitive data sets, you do that locally. If you have some very compute intensive uh, AI and model training that you want to do, uh, you have the option of using a hyperscaler and then bringing that what you train there down locally and maybe do some refining. I think a great example would be a large language model. Large language models, if you're going to start from scratch, um, you know, do require intensive amounts of compute. But if you wanted to have a more, uh, you could start with a existing large language model, uh, do some training on public data, and then bring that model down to your own uh, data center, your own private um, uh, cloud, and then do some additional training there. So your the private data, the sensitive information, never has to leave your cloud. And then once you have uh, once you have that model built, well, that model can go anywhere you know, based on whatever restrictions around that. But generally speaking, it's the data that has the PII, uh, the, the, the extremely sensitive data. The model itself is not necessarily going to have uh, anything that is sensitive or could cause problems if that goes shared out. So let's talk about kind of our partner ecosystem here. You'll notice a lot of logos on here, right? And not just the hyperscalers. Um, you know, we have a partnership with Intel. We have a partnership with NVIDIA. Uh, we have a good partnership with IBM Watson, and you'll see we also have partnership with Starburst Galaxy, Anaconda, Pachyderm, and a PyTorch, TensorFlow, and all of this, all of these partners 
make our product better, right? It is a true collaborative community and partner ecosystem that we have here that work in both cloud and in self-managed or on-prem uh, environments. And this is really kind of an example of what a model operational life cycle would be. Um, you uh, unlock the value of your data by making it fast and easy to get data across to a hybrid cloud with Starburst. You can use Pachyderm to bring data versioning and governance into, into this very precious asset. Your data, right? Your data, your raw data has a certain amount of value, but when you start putting work into it and refining it, it really starts to gain uh, even more value. Anaconda is a uh, extensive set of data science packages that you can use inside your Jupyter projects. You can also use uh, Watson Studio to build, run, and manage AI models at scale using Watson ML and Watson OpenScale. We have a partnership with NVIDIA, so you can use GPU-enabled hardware to uh, accelerate your data science uh, projects uh, that use neural networking. This is really important that we have the integration here from, from, the, uh, from the hardware on up. Uh, we also have uh, Intel OpenVINO notebook images. And it's a toolkit of pre-trained models optimized for Intel processors and GPUs. Uh, and we also have uh, integrated with uh, Intel OpenVINO model server, which is a scalable high performance model serving engine. So all of this, you can use all of this, you can use none of it, you can use pick and choose which parts you want to use that fits your need. That is really the power of open source and Red Hat, right? We work with all of these partners. We're neutral. We don't have a preference to one particular hyperscaler or another. This is not something you would get anywhere else. So with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about what the dashboard interface is. And we'll get to this in a minute because there's some cool things I want to show you. Um, so ultimately, this is what the dashboard uh, user interface looks like. If you're familiar with OpenShift, it's very similar to kind of what that would look like. We also have additional resources, but I want to talk today. I actually want to tab over now and double click on this notion here of data science projects and workbenches. So you'll see here, I don't have a uh, any projects here assigned to my workspace. Now, normally when I did, if you, if you watched me demo before either, well, not really on this platform yet or in this channel, but on other places that I do live streams, you've seen me demo uh, Red Hat OpenShift Data Science. And usually what I'll do is I'll just kick off a notebook server right from here. I'll pick my preferred image and uh, if I want GPUs or not, and then I'll just hit go, right? Uh, now, that's not always so simple. The lone wolf data scientist does exist. However, realistically, data scientists tend to work in teams and they tend to work on projects. Now, this is really the key here because now I can create a data science project and I'll just call this, um, you know, Frank, Frank's demo project. And I can add a description. This is for the live stream. All right, so now, now that I created a project, inside of projects, you have the idea of workbenches. So what I can do here is I can create a workbench, and I'll just call this, um, I'll just call this Frank's uh, notebook, NB, right? Now watch this. I can now uh, pick a particular image. So what this lets me do is I can create a, a workbench for individual members of my team, or uh, and we can kind of work on that. We can work on it collaboratively, or we can work on it separately. We can create separate workspaces. Uh, or I can, or both actually, so say I have, uh, say I'm really into TensorFlow. I just love TensorFlow. So what I can do now is I can set up the container size. Say I want to start from the base TensorFlow image. And if I go here, I can um, create new persistent storage. These are all my options here. Now I'm going to create a workbench. Now that workbench is starting up. It's spinning up. Now let's just say I want to try uh, another notebook, and I'll call this um, Frank uh, PyTorch. And I can go down here and say PyTorch. And I can change the parameters here. I can make this a larger cluster. 
uh, each with different ones, each with different storage. There's the name. I hit create. Now I have two notebook servers running at the same time, each with different versions of the software running. So if I have a particular user that is using uh, TensorFlow uh, exclusively, then uh, that, that developer can have their own instance that runs there. Uh, I can also create another workbench of, um, let's see, uh, I'll call this uh, John Doe notebook. Say John Doe is a member of my team. And what is the problem? I got to pick an image. Well, let's just say John Doe likes his standard data science. We click go. So I can have this collaborative experience. And here's the key. The RBAC uh, is tied to the cluster. Now, in the future, we'll talk about some Red Hat futures, uh, Red Hat OpenShift data science futures in a minute. But um, if I need to have, say, you know, a secret project that only me and John Doe have access to or uh, Jane Doe, right? If there's three three data scientists on the team, Jane Doe, myself, and John Doe, if I have a project that I really only need for sensitivity reasons or whatever, I, I just need myself in Jane Doe. Uh, right now, uh, I have to set up a separate uh, roads, a separate cluster, with, and use the RBAC and the uh, authentication built into that. In the future, in uh, in the future of roads, that is going to be fixed. So I'll be able to control very fine green control uh, on this one cluster of who's able to access it. Now, that is a good segue into roads futures. All right, so where do we stand here? Well, uh, what's coming up next, we have it broken out into two categories, the first half of 2023 and the second half of 2023. So in the first half of 2023, 20, uh, you'll see that uh, we'll have ML Ops as being a big part of what the product is going to have uh, added to it. We'll have enhanced model serving and monitoring. Uh, we'll also add model experimentation. So that means that we're going to support VS Code. We're going to support R, R Studio. Uh, and what that really means is that when you think of those workbenches, when I go here and I create a new item on my workbench, I can now say I want a workbench that is Visual Studio Code. I want a workbench that is R Studio. So you'll see that we're really taking this to the next level uh, in terms of you know flexibility and use cases. Uh, we're going to update the out-of-the-box uh, notebook images. Uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to start doing model explainability so you'll be able to explain or have some kind of insight or explainable ai into what decisions you're why the models that you're creating are making the decisions that they're making that's critically important uh in use cases around fairness and ethics and in some cases it's even required uh by law to have some kind of explainability we're going to add intel habana support uh, we're also going to have uh, data ops with Rota integration. Have not spoken much about Rota, but you're definitely going to love it when you see it. Uh, we're going to have platform capabilities, disconnected support. That's already here, right? So you'll be able to um, run this on-prem, either disconnected or complete, completely disconnected, air-gapped or not. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, enhanced uh, UI configuration. So we're already delivering on that. So what's next for the future? So again, ML ops, not a big surprise. That is going to play a big role in any um, data science project going forward because that really is the future. And unfortunately, uh, Red Hat knows a thing or two about DevOps. And arguably, ML ops is really uh, a machine learning or AI flavor <laughs> of the DevOps process. So we're going to have enhanced model serving and monitoring, uh, data science pipeline enhancements, and uh, to be determined what our model registry will be. Perhaps. We'll have something to say about that at Red Hat Summit, but my lips are sealed for now. Uh, and we'll also add more model experimentation features, right? We're going to enhance the collaboration capabilities. Um, that's the, the, the role-based access control to these various workbenches is basically what that is. We're going to update, uh, again, we're going to continually update these raw out-of-the-box out uh, notebook images um, and uh, custom notebooks phase two. That's also to be determined. My lips are once again sealed. Uh, we're also going to work on the data ops side of things with data labeling. And uh, in terms of platform capabilities, it will be coming to ARO, which means all you Azure fans, uh, you'll be able to run roads natively on, on, on Azure. 
And that means that uh, this will be an Azure marketplace, right? So you can just click through, do a search, say, uh, you know, Red Hat OpenShift Data Science, and boom, it will be there and it'll be that. It'll be click, 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 and you'll be able to do that very much the same way it is on uh, AWS Marketplace today. And uh, again, we're going to continually improve the admin UI. So that having been said, uh, I think the future looks bright for roads, um, and you have a great all right, so with that in mind, uh, you can see that the future of roads looks bright. It's already bright, it's just gonna get brighter. So next time uh, we'll have a guest and uh, think of some good questions. Let me know if there's something particular you would like to see in the comments below. Uh, if there's something particular you would like me to see demonstrate, uh, whether that's image generation or um, computer vision projects. Uh, I do have a demo I'm cooking on, 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 on using OpenCV, but it's not quite ready for, uh, for showing, but uh, definitely we'll uh, look forward to show, sharing that at a future date. But with that, I'm gonna end this uh, stream. And again, if you want, if there's some particular technology or particular question you want me to address or be a guest on the show and we can talk about roads, um, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Once again, I'm Frank Lavinia, and 